for a very long time now, variable refresh rate has just worked if you're on Xorg. And the same is true if you're on Wayland as well. As long as your name wasn't GNOME, because in the GNOME case, there had been open merge requests, not open issues, open merge requests for three whole years. And finally, after all of this time, this is coming to an end with GNOME 46. Variable refresh rate has been merged and is almost certainly going to ship. This feature is broken down into two major merge requests, both of which being made by the same person. The first being display, add support for variable refresh rate modes. This is the UI change to actually enable variable refresh rate. The other one being backends native, add support for variable refresh rate. This is the thing that actually adds in the variable refresh rate support. We'll start on the first one. Now, as tends to happen with GNOME, there is always the question of does there actually need to be a setting for this or should it just always be there if it is available? This was asked by two separate people. The first one being Georgius Stavrakis, under which circumstances is disabling variable refresh rate desirable shouldn't be something that's basically always on. And the second one being from Benjamin Berg. Stupid question, but is there any reason to not always just enable VRR? And that's not a stupid question. If you have variable refresh rate on your monitor and all of the hardware supports it, it kind of makes sense that you'd always want to have it enabled. This is what the developer says. It's mostly to allow opting out from using the feature. For example, if the mentioned caveats are bothersome to anyone. It also provides some visibility on the fact that we actually have support for this. Well, once it's merged anyway, I'll leave this thread open to handle the UI change you suggested. Those caveats being stutter in cursor movement with passively updating full screen clients. This seems to be specifically a GNOME issue. The second issue being is a missing Wayland protocol. So there is no way to advertise the fact that you are using variable refresh rate to the applications running on your system in case some random application, for example, things that don't behave properly on a full screen, don't want to use it and want to opt out of it instead. Now, if you're interested in a deep discussion about how a drop down should look and what values should be in there and how those values should be displayed, I'll leave a link to the follow up issue in the description down below. I really don't want to talk about a UI for 20 minutes, but maybe that's something you care about. So instead of doing that, let's swap over to the actual functionality. There are a few small design decisions to make, but overall, the core variable refresh rate experience is quite good in my tests. That is going to come back to bite them a bit later, and this is going to explain why it wasn't merged three years ago. Setting the variable refresh rate experimental feature is required to enable the feature followed by a restart of the session, log out, and back in. So at the time, you can enable it with a G settings if you have the patch enabled. There are some limitations still, but those are out of scope for this MR and covered in the caveat section, the caveats that we read before. Now, initially, this seemed like a matter of write the support in GNOME, and then basically you're good. But um, <laughs> as you can tell from the dependency section, that is not the case. Fixes an issue in Mutter's direct scan out path that could result in severe stutter and missed frames, which significantly impacted variable refresh rate in my tests. Required to avoid a crash with the addition of the variable refresh rate experimental feature. Required to avoid stutter with Firefox Wayland. Required to avoid a degradation following this right here. Required to handle a frame scheduling edge case better. And once again, the exact same thing. All of these merge requests were made in the last eight months, which realistically, is when this was seriously being worked on. Yes, it is from three years ago, but there was no chance it was getting merged back then. So the first comment was from Jonas, down past all of this right here. First, I'd like to show my appreciation of you working on this. 
Thanks a lot. The first thing that comes to mind is, how do you intend to deal with frame scheduling? Currently, the frame scheduler is global, a single one for all CRTCs of all monitors, but work is ongoing, making each CRTC have their own frame scheduler, where we schedule and render the content for each CRTC individually. CRTC is one of those weird old terms that is still in use, but doesn't really reflect modern hardware. It means cathode ray tube controller. We don't run cathode ray tubes today. Instead, the more modern term is VDC, video display controller, but a lot of people just keep using the old term. Currently, we only render them individually, but all at the same time. Still, both the current global frame scheduler and the one in the works applies the same scheduling mechanism, which is to take a configured refresh rate, calculate budget for how much time is needed for a frame, and schedule frames in a monotonic manner. Monotonic basically meaning unchanging, so you're showing each frame with the same amount of time between each frame. With variable refresh rate, I suspect things must work in a different way, to not always render at a fixed rate. First thing to make note of here is that I suggest not make any changes to the current scheduling mechanism that exists in MUT today, as the plan is that it will more or less all be completely replaced before 3.38. What are your ideas or plans in this area? Another thing that comes to mind is, forgive my ignorance, our variable refresh rate usually manually configured slash enabled on a per monitor basis, similar to resolution, or can it be made, e.g. happen automatically if the right conditions apply, e.g. the client is capable and asks for it, or whatever ways we might be able to have when some consensus is reached for how things should eventually work. Thanks for taking a look at this. The kernel API for variable refresh rate is fairly simple. The capability itself is advertised on the relevant connector, and the activation can be done on the CRTC both through KMS properties, that being kernel mode setting, which is configuring the display from the kernel, once active, the V-blank period becomes dynamic, allowing page flipping to happen later than the usual, and within the upper and lower bounds of the monitor's variable refresh rate support. Mutter currently targets the next V-blank period, as was calculated from the static refresh rate configured for the CRTC. Being optimistic about rendering within the smallest possible refresh interval, however, since the V-blank period is actually delayed until the frame is submitted for flipping, delaying the frame rendering by a whole refresh interval when missing the next V-blank target may not be desirable. I will verify this theory and see if anything can be done to improve the handling of this scenario. The issue of having a single frame clock for the entire stage is indeed a problem. Variable refresh rate wouldn't work well in multi-monitor setups without a frame clock per CRTC, so per each of the displays basically. Different refresh rates would be fed from different CRTCs, preventing any benefit of variable refresh rate. I've edited the description of the merge request to mention this issue. Further insights. Frame scheduling as it's done now doesn't appear to make sense with variable refresh rate. What's required here, at least for basic variable refresh rate scenario, which this merge request is aiming for, single window slash surface covering the entire output, is to draw a frame and perform a page flip as soon as the client commits its own frame. This would allow Mutter to properly communicate the draw frequency of the client to the kernel driver responsible for adjusting the refresh rate of the monitor. I've added a few proof of concept commits that allow this, and they seem to make variable refresh rate work relatively well, at least in single monitor setups. However, they are far from ideal in their current form and introduce regressions in other scenarios. <laughs> We'll talk about those in a moment. Each commit has some thoughts on what would be a better and more complete solution in its description. Now, as is often the case, just getting the basic functionality done is going to come with some blockers. So when 903 is fixed, it will be more feasible to make this work well, I'd say. This ended up being closed, and I agree. It will likely need 1208 as well, which was also closed. Upon further inspection, it seems that solving 1255 is enough to get a good experience when it comes to input events. This is still open, because this merge request is not actually being used. <laughs> this is a mess of different mergers. What actually happened is when 1241 was closed, the commits from that merge request were brought into this main one as a solution to 1255. Also, as with most merge requests, it sits around 
for a very long time. Someone first said, any news on this would be awesome if this could be included in GNOME 40. Three years ago, November 13th. And it just kind of sat like that with some work being done, some people asking about, hey, is it going to be merged? Hey, can we get a status update? This is a year ago. It's already been over a year since I made the first comment. This needs to be prioritized or it will never get done. And it's the biggest thing, in my opinion, holding this desktop environment back for Linux gaming. It's certainly one of the major ones. And unlike most cases when someone says, hey, is this going to be done? Is this getting done? In this case, he actually did just rebase it on the current version. And I guess George Stavrakis just didn't see the previous comment because he asked the exact same thing. Do you plan on rebasing this one? Done. And he also left a follow-up comment as well. This MR was rebased on top of the current main branch along with Gnome Control Center 734. That is the other merge request we were talking about. For those interested, there are also the following branches which can be used for testing on top of GNOME 42. I updated the merge request description with the merge request current state, including the important caveat section. From my perspective, there are no longer any issues blocking this merge request from being merged, only limitations to be considered. Review and testing would be highly appreciated. And then he realized there were things that were actually blocking the merge request, because testing is what they did. First, he noticed there were some CI failures. Not relevant to the uh, code functionality itself, but also important to fix. Did some testing on triple monitor mixed variable refresh rate. I found that when a window is full screen on a non-variable refresh rate display, the cursor and screen content is lagging and stuttering like low refresh rate, e.g. Firefox full screen on non-variable refresh rate playing YouTube is lagging with and without the player's full screen mode. The cursor is skipping around the screen. Maybe it is using my variable refresh rate screen's lowest refresh rate. Try it on a single variable refresh rate monitor setup. 4K 60Hz. When running variable refresh rate tests within variable refresh rate range, the cursor updates at like 2Hz while the bars move smoothly. I can only reproduce this when using VRR test. It does not happen when playing 50 FPS videos using M 50 FPS videos using MPV with a cursor update at 50 Hz as expected. When I full screen GNOME console and then alt tab to place a 60 FPS video player above the console, monitors update at like 30 Hz. While if I full screen the video player first and place the console window above it later, the monitor updates at 60 Hz. I suppose variable refresh rate should be disabled in this case. Currently, it seems that variable refresh rate activates whenever GNOME shell is not visible. This happens even with variable refresh rate disabled in the control panel. Playing full screen video is completely broken in Firefox. Severe frame drops and stuttering cursor, no matter 30 FPS or 60 FPS video, in Chromium, everything works fine. This happens with variable refresh rate disabled. This was not all of the bugs. This was just a very small sample of them. Even though the merge request was there and had been there for two years already, it still clearly needed work to actually get merged. All of these problems ended up getting dealt with, and once again, eight months ago, it got rebased onto main. Again, it seemed like it was ready to merge into a new release. Then four weeks ago, again, got rebased onto GNOME 46. I'd like to thank the GNOME Foundation for sponsoring my work as part of the Sovereign Tech Fund project, and specifically Sunny and Tobias for making it possible, and then lists out the various things that have changed along the way. And GNOME 46 is the next version. And finally, finally, it was in a state, the bugs, they seemed like they were dealt with, and there were no new bugs that were known about that were blocking this, so finally, it was time to actually get it signed off. The first person who signed it off was Carlos Ganacho down here. Looks good to me mostly. Basically found nits and small possible improvements, but no big head scratches in how variable refresh rate is integrated. There was also a bit of concern from Sebastian Wick, but the developer had a short conversation with him and he was like, okay, that's fine. And eventually he decided to sign it off as well. Looks good to me, waiting for the string exception and giving others time to take a final look as well. Whilst it is awesome that this is getting merged, 
it's kind of a bad time to do it because GNOME is a big project. They have schedules, they have deadlines. And at this point, they'd actually missed the deadline for GNOME 46 freeze. Luckily though, he reached out to the different parts. For the feature freeze, they were like, ah, uh, yeah, sure, this is pretty big. Although there are some pretty big changes and it is quite risky, Carlos Ganacho says there is a low impact if the experimental setting is not enabled. For the UI freeze, they were like, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, you can go and do it. And then the string freeze, which is all about like translation and text and all that sort of stuff, they were like, yeah, this doesn't seem like that big of a deal to do. Let's do it. So, unless something else is noticed that is a giant blocking bug, this is going to be in GNOME 46. Whilst it is going to be disabled by default and hidden behind a setting, congratulations to the GNOME users. Finally, you have variable refresh rate support as well. It's taken a while, but that's one less thing to mark off the list of things to mock GNOME about. The list is still very long though. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you a GNOME user? Do you use Plasma? My Plasma video is still going to come out. I'm just waiting for the Arch team to actually get their package out. So um, let me know your thoughts down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, the Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and get gnomed. Woo!